Well, hello there. Today I thought I'd run through some green inks. Anyone up for that? Now's your chance to go away. Okay then, let's have a little look. So here I have some green inks, which I will swatch up and mutter about a little bit, and uh, etc. So let's get started, shall we? So here I have my trusty, <coughs> my trusty frog in my throat, my trusty Gain Leather B5 Tomo River 52 GSM paper notebook turned on its side and open at a blank page. So today I'm going to go for some green inks. I'm rather partial to green. Uh, so I will go through these today and see what we think uh, in no particular order. So we will swatch it out. We'll do another layer of the top half so we can see a vague difference between the wet writers, dry writers. So the first ink is Mont Blanc Irish Green. which is a nice dark green. So I'll do a teensy bit of analysis towards the end. Uh, and I just realized I forgot to show you the bottle for that one. So I'll show you that now. But yeah, we'll go through um, some of the properties and stuff after we've dried here is the Mont Blanc Irish Green in a Mont Blanc uh, shoe shaped bottle. It's quite nice, so if you've got not a lot left, you can dribble it down this way and then it's all pulled there, etc. Don't know, I haven't got anywhere near the bottom of that yet. So, let's see how that one works out. Um, but yeah, nice dark green, nice green. I should probably, uh, never mind. Um, and just a little bit paler, obviously, on the drying out portions, but we will return to that in the near future. But it's nice and rich colour. The next one will be uh, Graf von Faber-Castell Moss Green, which is in a very nice chunky glass bottle with the Graf von Faber logo at the top. We'll have a little swatch up of this one. So slightly darker than the Mont Blanc. Just run a bit more over the top. Yeah, I may well go as far as to say this is my favorite green ink. Hope you like the sound of silence. Um, yeah, very partial to the moss green. I am, as Master Yoda might say it, that way around. So shall I. If you don't know who that is, then my God, you're young. Next ink, and I've just taken the lid off the bottle without showing you again, so I will show you after is Pinida Verde, which translates as Pinida Green. We 
which is coming back towards the lighter side a little bit. I'm trying to get the angle of this dip pen right. You know what I need? Different dip pen. Do have my eye on one. We'll see what the future brings. So that is the Panada Verde, which comes in a bottle like this, which is nice and functional. Next up, we're going to go with uh, Diamine Green Umber, which I have in a nice uh, 30 milliliter size bottle. The only drawback of these being sometimes, depending on the pen, won't fit in the neck of the bottle. But what can you do? I'll tell you what you can do. If it's a cartridge converter, you can syringe fill it. But it's all obviously a bit of a faff. If it's an eyedropper, you're all right. A piston filler, well, need a bigger bottle in it. I'm gonna go off the screen. Yeah, I knew that was a bad idea. So, time on. Green Umber. Yeah, so if you see what I mean, if you've got anything um, with a decent size section, decent size, you know what I mean? Chunky. If you've got chunky pen, lad, yeah, you might want to get the uh, 80 mil size bottle because otherwise neck ain't gonna ain't gonna take your pen you know what I mean probably not sorry about that next up is Sherwood Green from Diamine also in the 30 mil bottle not I should point out that the bottle makes any difference to the properties of the ink at least as far as I'm aware Nothing certain in this world, is it? Yeah, just give that an extra coating along the top. I'll tell you what, I can't even fit my whole dip pen in that. Good thing I did it this before the levels got too low. Anyway. Diamond. Sherwood Green. Which is obviously a little bit foresty. And last up, we have Roran Klinger, Roran Klinger, sorry, um, Alt Goldgrun, which I believe means Old Gold Green. And just give the top another coating. Yeah.
Now that bit where you're writing something. And you have that little moment of, I don't know, panic? Let's not quite go to the panic extreme. But that little moment of, am I spelling this right? It's a funny word. Am I getting that one right? Well, yeah, I had that in the middle there. So, uh, I'll, t oh, I'll tell you what, I missed a hyphen. Maybe that was it. Maybe the hyphen sparked the panic. Alt, gold, green. Yeah, no, it's all right. It's all right, lads. We're safe. Now, if you're going to do this, I hope you don't mind getting inky fingers. I'll tell you what, when I did my red inks comparison, I spent most of Monday at work going, no, I haven't cut myself. I think I'll be safe with this, unless I'm off to work on Vulcan or something. So, having had a little bit of time for most of these to dry, we can see a little bit more detail. So the Mont Blanc is um, pretty constant. You're not really going to get much shading out of that one. You do get the difference. Find something that's not going to interfere with the focus too much. You can see a wee bit of difference between um, a very wet or drier nib. Um, see with the pulled areas. You, you do get a bit of shading when you write, um, but it's not massively shading ink. It's going to depend on what sort of nib you've got. If you've got quite a wet nib, you might get a bit of shading um, on a different party stroke, you have top and bottom. But it's a lovely colour and very consistent, um, very nice ink. Um, one of these bottles, which is not sure, 50 or 70 mils. Don't know, can't remember big bottle anyway, um, is around £20. I think I got that for £21, maybe. Um, you know, you can pick them up wherever you pick them up and you might get a little deal or something like that. Um, but very nice uh, fluid ink to write with. Sorry, that just sounded stupid in my mind to say fluid ink, but you know what I mean. So moving on to the graph from Faber, Castell, Moss Green, darker, again, uh, than the Irish green. Uh, even when you're in a drier zone, you're gonna get a slightly darker, more mossy, more vegetative green, yeah? I know, there's a reason they call it these things. Um, but you've got a much darker uh, kind of wet zone. When I've finished, uh, middle of the round. I'll just tilt the page to see if we can. There's a tiny weeny bits of sheen just around some of the edges of the pooled area. You're not going to get massive amounts um, when you're writing, but there is just it's just trying to sheen it a tiny weeny bit. Um, but you can get. It's not. I wouldn't. Again, I'm not going to say you can get massive amounts of shading out of that, but uh, sometimes on your up down strokes with a wet nib you might do uh, one of those bottles is 75 mil says it there look and that's they're typically around 30 pounds again up or down a few quid uh but yeah they're, they're your more top end of ink prices i suppose but uh, that is a personal favorite of mine um so i'm happy with that one panida 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 verde or green um slightly lighter it's uh it's a funny one this I, I i do like this but um i go through little phases of something bugging me about it i don't know what it kind of dries uh i don't want to say pale but very i don't know stark or bold it's, it does scream the green at you a little bit it's got a good bit of punch in it um probably not explain that very well but it, it it's, a, it's a quite vibrant probably more so than you think it's gonna be um you can see again i'll tilt the page when i'm done yakking but you can see uh just trying to sheen around the edges there a little bit again i've not really found much in when i'm writing uh in the way of sheen but uh it, it, that you don't get i again you don't tend to get a lot of shade out of this i find um but it is nice it's nice and solid it's nice and stark and it you know very block solid in the green makes no sense at all does it but you know 
Oh, do I? Moving on. Uh, oh, sorry, the Panela Verde. I can't remember how much that cost, actually. Um, I think it's probably about 15-ish pounds. I got it uh, quite a while ago now um, for what I think is a 50 mil bottle. Mid-range, I suppose. Diamine Green Umber is kind of a completely different shade. Uh, it's much paler. Um, I didn't like this that much when I first got it. I, I inked it into, I want to say Twisby Eco, and I wasn't that enamored with it. But uh, over time, I've actually learned to quite like that. If, I, if I've got quite a juicy nib, um, I do quite like the way it dries uh, in something wetter, just uh, a little bit subtler, um, paler green, but it does have a little bit of depth to it. You can see it's slight bits of shading there, but um, consistent ink. And the 30ml bottles of most diamonds are about three quid, four quid maybe. Sorry, quid is pounds in English slang, in case you weren't familiar. Um, in some areas of England, um, also referred to as squids from time to time. So, three squids, there you go. Not by me, obviously, that would be silly, but I'm just trying to keep you informed. Diamond Sherwood Green, uh, kind of getting in closer to the moss green with that uh, <laughs> vegetative green, yeah? Um, obviously with a name like Sherwood Green, possibly referring to the legendary forest of the Robin of the Hood, which is an actual forest. Looks like that. So if you ever drive by somewhere and it looks like that, yeah, Sherwood Forest. You actually do get a bit of sheen coming off the pool edges there, rather than just trying, you can actually see a decent bit. Just, just around the edge there, you can see a little bit, you see that? Don't know, turn it in a minute. Um, yeah, close to close to your moss green there, just a little bit lighter, um, not quite with the same depth as the moss green, but not a bad um, lower cost alternative. I do find it's a little bit drier. Both of the dye mines actually, uh, a bit of uh, drier inks. I find certainly these two are a bit more viscous. Um, you get a bit more glide off your, your pen, and I do find a slightly longer dry time on the Mont Blanc over the moss green as well. Um, but not a bad alternative if your dark green forestry thing is your thing. Again, three squids. Uh, then last one's a little bit different. The Rohr and Klingner Alt Goldgren. Um, obviously in the name as I explained, so it's gold green. Old being, you know, a little bit more oldy worldy tinge to it. Uh, you can get a nice bit of shading uh, off of this ink, I find. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nice little mix of um, gold and green. Um, I fell in love with this when I got it actually, but um, there's very few nibs. Well, I don't know about very few. Very few of my nibs that I tend to put it into, or pens with certain nibs that I put it into. Uh, I do like a wetter writing pen with these, but I kind of like, I've, I've turned this into almost a wet fine nib that I like it in. I, I originally thought it was, I preferred it in a broad, but I find if I get the thinner yet wetter lines, it shows up really nicely. Um, but yeah, there's a nice, you can get some nice shading out of this, but uh, not a lot of sheen. And I think they're around the 12 to 15 pounds. Uh, Mark for sorry, I want to say that's 50 mil. Yeah, 50 mil bottle. So I'll just tilt this a little bit, see if I can show any of this off. So just on the moss screen there, you can see just trying to sheen just a tad. Um, you're not getting anything off the marble, but you can see. A bit more coming off the edges of the panida. If you had something really wet, you might get a bit of sheen, or if it's hanging around in your pen for a while. Uh, nothing on the green umber. A little bit down the bottom, around the edges, your wetter areas of the Sherwood, and not really anything sheen related on the Alt Gold Gren. 
so that was uh, my green inks part one I'm sure I'll do a part two at some stage keep your eyes out if you're interested I hope you vaguely found this interesting and I'll catch you next time bye 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 look out for those squids by the way yeah careful see you later bye